Good day to you. This is Dennis L. Waters Sr., Dr. Dennis L. Waters Sr., and I am continuing to read the book, This Is It, by Dr. Joseph Murphy. It is dealing with really praying in such a way that you get an answer, that you receive an answer. And it's not just simply receiving an answer. It is knowing, knowing that at the end of your prayer that you will receive an answer. That is, there is that text in the Bible, that text in the Bible that says when you pray, it is vital that you believe that your prayer has been answered. And so the the vitality of that, the importance of that is that you at the point that you have finished praying, at the point that you've finished praying, that you actually have in mind or that you know that your prayer has been answered. Now think about that for a moment. You're praying and you are sometimes, of course, praying over and over again about the same thing. And each time you, at the end of it, say, so it is, or amen, or ashe, or some phrase that seems to indicate that you truly have put it to rest, and that you say, your will be done, or um, some, some phrase, say thank you. All of those indicate that you believe, and yet you come back again and pray the same prayer. I don't, I don't know about you. I've done this. And I pause to take a drink of water, clear my throat up a little bit, but it gives you a time to think about that. Have you ever done this? And there are a number of courses and books that I have read on prayer from various authors. And I've had answers to prayer. I'll talk about those in another um, section. I'll, I'll just talk about some things. I've seen some fantastic answers to prayer. I wanted to do this reading just pretty much straight out of the book itself. That's my intent with this. But just to answer the question, what's in it for you? What's in it for you? Why should you listen to this? Why should you practice this? And the reason that I can give for that is that while I've had answers to prayer, I mean powerful answers to prayer, before I ever encountered this book and others like this book, I recognize that the principles that are found in this book are similar to the principles that I was using without really knowing them as principles. When I speak of principles or laws or rules, they, to me, are like the laws of mathematics, which says one plus one equals two. And that one plus one equals two doesn't matter if you're saying one plus one or 100 plus 100 or 1,000 plus 1,000, or 1 million plus 1 million, it's going to equal 2. And that is all the way up until you do some type of higher mathematics, calculus perhaps, logistic regression perhaps, something to that effect. And so there's a way that one learns to pray. And that's what we're talking about here. And I believe that it's possible to learn a method of praying. So if you're praying and your prayers are being answered, this might not be for you. This might not be for you. If you want a higher level of prayer, then this may be something that's beneficial to you. I hope so. So let me just do the, uh, the chapter, chapter 13 of this book. It's called Outpicturing Man. The Outpicture, O-U-T-P-I-C-T-U-R-I-N-G. Man, M-A-N. All outer manifestations of man's life 
are projections of an inner state or image contained within his consciousness. Man must learn that the only way to create a better world is to build the constructive images within his consciousness that he wishes to see expressed in the world. The world is an outpicturing of our mental beliefs and attitudes. We look at a man and we say that he is lame, deaf, blind, ragged, or poor. We have clothed him in rags, in garments of blindness, deafness, and poverty. But in absolute truth, he is God and can never be any less than he is. Let us awaken from the dream and clothe every person in the garment of Christ, the anointed one. Who is blind as he that is perfect and blind as the Lord's servant? Isaiah 42 and verse 19. Now, when you first read this, and again, I encourage you to get the book. And if you email me, I can send you a PDF copy of the book. And you can email me at Dr. D.L. Waters, Sr., D-R-D-L-W-A-T-E-R-S-S-R, at D-R-D-L-W-A-T-E-R-S-S-R dot com. You can mail me, email me at that, and I'll send you a PDF copy of this book. And I'd, I'd recommend that you get the book in whatever form that it benefits you. Whatever your learning style is, get it, read it until you practice it and practice it, read it, teach it until it comes alive for you. That's that's my recommendation. Um, do it until it works. Do it until it works. And this this may sound something far fetched, which I just read. However, there was a uh, Catholic nun that was in India. Uh, she went to work among the individuals that were called, um, I believe it was, the uh, outcasts of India. Uh, they were like forgotten people, the untouchables, I believe they called them, according to what I had read. And <clears throat> she worked among them. The lady was Mother Teresa. She is considered by them to be Saint Teresa, a uh, Teresa now. And she worked among the untouchables. And there's a quote that supposedly came from her that I have read. And that quote said, every day I see Jesus Christ, or I see Jesus um, in his distressing disguises. And so this is similar to what Dr. Murphy is speaking about when he's basically saying that we look not at the outer appearance, but we look at the inner person. And so he says this statement, we look at a man and we see that he is lame, deaf, blind, ragged, or poor. So we're looking at the outside. And you know the text in the Bible says, judge not by appearance. And so this whole aspect is what he's talking about here. So continuing, the perfect man cannot see a blind man or a deaf man. Neither can he see a man in rags. He sees only divine perfection, the divine idea behind all forms. He sees the ever-flowing reality, justice, and beauty in all things. In other words, he sees God in all things. He does not see another. His command is that of a king. Take ye away the stone. John 11, verse 39. Remember, that's coming out of the book of John, the 11th chapter, in verse 39, dealing with the experience of Lazarus, where Lazarus had been dead for four days. Imagine that. And then when Jesus shows up, of course, the, his sisters, Lazarus' sisters, are crying and said, if you had only been here, uh, Lazarus would not have died. But Jesus, who is the resurrection, Jesus the Christ, who is the resurrection, uh, paid no attention, of course, to that. Um, the Bible says he wept, but his weeping was not because Lazarus was dead. His weeping was really that they did not see him as the resurrection and the life. Uh, that would be a better interpretation of that. They did not see him. He is the resurrection. He knows that he's going to call forth Lazarus um, right there. He knows that. So he's not weeping because he is dead. Um, but that they did not see 
him, the inner part of him. They may have looked at him and saw the outer part of him. And oftentimes we don't see the inner part of a person. And that's what's being talked about here. There are movies made about such a thing. There's a movie that you may have seen, depending on where you are in the world. It's called The Wizard of Oz. It deals with a young lady who does not see people in Kansas, the farmhands and everything. And so she goes to Oz in a dream, really, if you look at the movie carefully. She goes to Oz in a dream. And the very people that she meets there, they are the tin man, they are the cowardly lion, they are the brainless scarecrow, all of those individuals. But if you look at their faces carefully, you will find that they are the same people who are in Kansas. And the movie's real impact is when you look at it very carefully, it has to do with the aspect that Dorothy had not really seen them when they were in Kansas. The same is true about a movie called The Transformers. And you look at that movie very carefully, you'll find that it's dealing not with the transformation of a car or cars or trucks or whatever. It's dealing with the transformation of people. And so to bring out the best that's in people. So this is what Dr. Murphy is talking about. The perfect man giving complete recognition to God and realizing that all things are possible to him or to her cannot see any lack anywhere. Hence, his request for abundance is automatically granted. He is blind to all evidence of the five senses and worldly beliefs or powers outside of himself. He sees, his eyes see, or forever turn inward toward the real. His eyes or her eyes are forever turn inward toward the real. If you have a lesion on your face and a friend prays for you, the latter does not inwardly see the lesion on your face. On the other hand, or on the contrary, he hears you telling him, or she hears you telling her, that you are overjoyed that God has granted you perfect, a perfectly beautiful, smooth face. If he succeeds and the scar disappears, he saw the perfect face. So remember again that this is the idea that before you pray, there's already an answer. And you believe before you even started praying, God knew what the answer was. And the answer is already inside of you, inside of me. So it says that person sees that perfect face already. This manifestation may have occurred the same moment you were telling him the foolish details of the difficulty you experienced so far in treating it and all the resultant failure. Where did the lesion go? Where did it disappear to? The truth is that it exited only in your imagination and belief. It exited only in your imagination and belief. When you have learned these great truths, you have reincarnated indeed. To learn these truths is to know them, and to know them is to live them and to witness them. A person is playing a role in the great drama of life. When the curtain comes down, he puts off his garments, hangs it up, and disappears from sight. He ultimately returns to the source, the one source. In Star Wars, this was called the force. He ultimately returns to the source. For him, we from him, the source, we all come forth. To him, we all at last return. There's no other place to go. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain. Isaiah 11 and verse 9. When John or Mary dies, as we usually employ the term, it means that John or Mary, as the case may be, lives on in each one of us. A person never dies. The quality, tone, or mood of the infinite, which was his always exit and always will, always existed and it always will. The subjective afterlife may be a nightmare or a lovely dream, depending entirely on what a person has impressed on his subjective mind before passing over. So it's saying, really, individuals, when they die, they are unchanged and they will live whatever they have impressed upon their subjective mind. So, let us pray the melody of God here, and listen to the overtones of life here. In this way, we will be better equipped to play the game of life in the next dimension. 
all things subsist in the infinite. And when we call forth the expressions by our feelings, then it may be said to exit or to exist. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, said the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty, Revelation 1 and verse 8. I gird thee, though thou hast not known me, Isaiah 45 and verse 5. We fail to see that it is always God coming into the world when a child is born. That child is its own father and its own mother. There is only one father, and he is our father. It is he that hath made us, Psalms 100 and verse 3. And so this idea of outpicturing, outpicturing a human, outpicturing a human, uh, which is what this chapter is about, it first of all talks about it, that when we look at a person, we're looking at an outer person, but the real person is within. So we see one thing on the outside, one thing on the outside, and we may see rags, we may see that the person has Uh, blindness or deafness or uh, is in poverty. But the truth of that individual, T-R-U-T-H, capital T-R-U-T-H, is what's inside the individual. And that's what we are awakening to, what's inside the individual, any individual, every individual. Uh, The truth is that Christ dwelleth in the individual. The DNA of God, if you will, is in the individual. And so we've heard others like Nelson Mandela that says that that light is within all of us. That light is within uh, all of us. That's what we're talking about here. That light is within all of us. And to let the light come out, let it shine. Uh, there's, there's all kinds of movies about this as well. And so the individuals that are to bring forth this in others sees that light before the individual many times sees that light. I see that light in you. You see that light in another. And you call it forth, no matter what the outer appearance may be. Mother Teresa did that for the untouchables, so-called untouchables in India, and brought them forth so they could manifest. And so that's what this particular teaching is about. That's what we're doing it for, is to call it forth in those who hear these words. That's why I'm doing this. That's why Spirit has said to me that this is what I needed to do. And so this is the 13th chapter of the book, This Is It, by Dr. Joseph Murphy. Blessings. Bye-bye.